What Drives You is brought to you by Ziggler, your premier source for equipping life and leadership coaches. Visit Ziggler.com and let them inspire your true coaching performance. Yeah. Welcome to What Drives You, the podcast for driven people who want to drive further and faster and enjoy every minute of the drive. I'm Kevin Miller, and in every episode, I'm devoted to helping you get more clear on exactly what you want and why you want it. You've got all the drive you need within you, and I'm here to give it fuel. In this episode, I'm asking what drives Christmas and give ideas on how to actually enjoy the holiday season and fuel your new year. I mean, sometimes we have an extraordinary experience from a spontaneous event, but for the most part, the epic and fulfilling moments in our lives come from intentionality. And while there's often much planning around this time from Thanksgiving to Christmas and this holiday season overall, there's seldom intentionality. And it feels like every year finds more and more people performing a tradition of more obligation than celebrating a time of actual joy. I mean, the season's rife with expectations and shoulds, and it can often leave you wondering if anyone is actually having fun. I mean, I'm surely not going to be so arrogant as to offer some diehard solution, but I'll offer some ideas and insights that have worked for me and for others. And sometimes it helps to simply get honest about what is driving you, even if you don't decide to change any one thing specifically. So I'm going to follow along in my eight key areas of life, seven in essence from the book, but then another one, uh, personal interest, that's an addition. And what tends to drive us during the holidays and help reveal what drives you so you can course correct the circumstances and or just your mind. You can make this a quick and simple exercise to write down or simply just consider what is driving you or what you want to be driving you and why during the holiday season. Well, to look at what drives us during the holidays, we'll take a brief walk through, again, these eight areas and look to uncover what is driving us and what we want to be driving us. And the areas include spiritual, relationships, health and wellness, mind, mental health, work, career, business, money, finances, and then achievements. And then I'm going to tack on personal interest. Start off with spiritual. So I grew up in a world where the holiday time starts with Thanksgiving and climaxes at Christmas and culminated with ringing in the new year. I mean, Christmas was intrinsically spiritual in essence. And from a Christian perspective, it's about the birth of Jesus Christ. Well, today we have many other holidays and recognitions. It's like Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and I looked up, there's all kinds of them. Some I hadn't even heard of, Los, Los Posadas and Winter Solstice. And I mean, as you know, from listening to me, uh, if you have for a while, I define the core of spirituality as an acknowledgement and honoring of, and ultimately a devotion to something greater than ourselves. And at the core the holiday season is about our faith and our hope and our relationships. That's the foundation of it. So if we stepped back from the expectations and duties and busyness, and I mean, you know, do this. Imagine if everyone you know banned you from any gift buying or social events and you were left with or, or tasked with only observing the holiday time from a spiritual lens and devotion. What would your focus be? What is important to you? What do you believe? What do you put faith in? I mean, I personally, uh, I do place my faith in Jesus Christ, but I don't believe I get some points for this in regards to Christmas or holiday time. I recently saw a meme with a guy at Heaven's Gate, in essence, say, and, he, and whoever was talking to him, whatever angel was saying, all right, yeah, you were a believer, but you skipped the not being a jerk about it part. And it makes me think of this, you know, holidays is your spirituality, just some obligatory focus on faith and religion. Is it, uh, you know, you, you know, people who carry their faith like a burden and some like a blessing. And I find myself often looking in the mirror, questioning how I am carrying what I believe in, but what spiritual connection do you have to the holidays? This is the time to take that into account. Pause for a moment if you need to. What spiritual connection do you have to the holidays? What greater purpose 
again, outside of obligations, especially family obligations. What would you celebrate if you were alone? If you had to spend the holidays alone spiritually, where would your focus be? Nobody but you sitting in a room, staring out the window. Is there one? What would that be? Is it God? Is it just gratitude? Is it thoughts of humanity? What is it? Again, I'm not here in this context to try to influence you toward any direction other than a spiritual component, which most people do have. What is it? Are you going to attend a church service? Christmas Eve service? Is that going to lift you or is it going to cause bitterness? Again, is it just an obligation or something you really care about? How is spirituality driving this holiday time for you? How do you want it to drive you? Why do you want it to drive you? Really, what's the motive, the feeling behind your spirituality at all, but during this holiday season. And, and when you find that, when you look at that and go, gosh, yeah, but what if it's a negative, like an obligation? Do you agree with that? Is that cool? Are you cool with that driving you? Does that feeling feel inspiring or depressing to you? What would you like to be driving you during this time of the year spiritually? I mean, imagine amongst all the goings on, the core devotions that you have to a greater purpose. Is it one that lifts you and inspires you and therefore will lift and inspire others. And again, obligation, I'm using that word, that doesn't inspire anyone. So again, take yourself on as an individual and think on how above everything else, transcending all that's going on, how do you want to connect to your spirituality during the holidays? All right, next one, relationships. I mean, this is paramount, of course, during the holidays. You could almost just cite this holiday time as our annual honoring of the relationships in our lives or our attempt to. I mean, most all of us are going to buy and give some gifts, whether we really want to or not. Most of us are going to attend some social functions, whether we want to or not. Some we might, some we might not. Most of us are going to endure some people that were around not, you know, that, that may not be normal. And we're going to endure them. People we may not rather be around. The holiday, holiday time is going to come and go. And you know, we're going to remember so little of it. Everybody's going to remember so little of it. What we will most remember, what will be most fulfilling at the end of the day are the people we really connected with. Those that we shared a special moment with. I know in my huge family that truly what will matter most to any of them are going to be the fulfilling connections with each other, with me for my part. How can I foster that with them, with me? I mean, as I write this, I'm looking at a holiday time with a family member who will likely not be with us the next holiday season. And it's made the aspect of this connecting very acute. So how are relationships, your thoughts about relationships, think about them. How are they driving your holiday time? What do you want regarding relationships during the holiday time? Why do you want them? Really, again, what is the motive, the feeling that's driving you in your relationships? And when you get to the core of that, think, do you agree with that? You may realize there's something driving you and you think, I, I don't agree with that. That's not what I want. Uh, that's important. That's what we're digging for here. Or the other that you find out, gosh, what's driving me is, is good. I'm in agreement with that. Rock on. That's what we call alignment. Think about the feeling. Does it inspire you? Does it depress you? What would you like? What feeling driving you regarding relationships would you like during the holiday season? Of course, what we'd all like is authentic feelings driving us to want to be with people, to connect with people, to serve people. What would foster connection at the end of the story here with relationships? What would foster real connections that means something to you and to others? All right. Third category, health and wellness. That's an interesting one during the holiday season. So many people are kind of letting yourself go regarding health and wellness. Not that you're going to hell in a handbasket here, but you know, we kind of imbibe and then we repent for our sins you know, with new year's resolutions. And I'd say that's what often is, is driving us as a culture with health and wellness during the holiday season is guilt. I mean, the greatest gift I could give you is some relief from the guilt, any guilt. And how to do that? Well, it's, again, it's the same formula for drive overall, getting clarity on what is driving you in regards to your health and wellness during the holiday time and seeing if you're in agreement or not. If you look at that and go, what's driving you one way or the other is guilt. Well, I don't think you're going to agree with that. That's the point. That's what we're coming to here. I've spent, it's interesting. I spent a lot of time with my brother 
during the the holiday season during christmas time and he is taking great joy in not imbibing in all the holiday foods while i on the other hand have taken great joy in i still am still will be in imbibing chocolates wine eggnog i mean if it's there i'm just gonna dive in and enjoy it while my brother jared is not even really honestly he's not even tempted by it he, he knows it makes him feel bad and it's just not worth it and uh you know i'm it's interesting as i think about that I'm not really tempted either. If you look up the word temptation, that's a desire to do something that you don't want to do or you don't want to want to do. It's not a temptation for me because it's a desire that I have and I'm just going to fulfill it. I'm fine with it. The temptations during the holidays are interesting though. If anything, my brother's temptation is going to be to, is to imbibe in the stuff he doesn't really want to, but he may, you know, feel like I should do it just to join in and, you know, mom made pie. And so I should have some whatever. And so that's a temptation uh, for him. Either way, we're trying to look at what is authentic to us and to a great, a great degree. I feel that we're best served just to get honest with ourselves. I mean, if the truth is that you'd really rather not imbibe if left up to yourself, then I'd say, man, be okay with saying no, thanks, man. Love you. I'm so great. You know, so sweet. You made the pie. I don't want to offend you. I'm sorry if I do, but I just don't want any. I'm going to feel bad afterwards. Use that as an excuse. Go, gosh, I would love to, mom. I'm being stereotypical here. I love to, but oh my gosh, I'm just, stomach's not, not, not feeling that well. Wait, nobody's going to say, oh, do that. Make an excuse. And it's not about lying. We're talking about being authentic here. But to some degree, man, if you can offload it, say, ah, you know, tummy's not feeling well, as opposed to no, I'm, you know, self-righteously not going to imbibe again, man. So for some reason, we're at a time here with, with, uh, you know, trying to make peace with ourselves and make peace with others. Uh, but be honest now, conversely with my brother, then if you're like me and you really do want to imbibe or, you know, you, or, you know, you're going to anyway, then I'd say, well, just make peace with it. Go with it. Get your fat pants out, be merry. I mean, I enjoy hitting the new year with some extra motivation, uh, like my pants are tight, uh, get consistent with my exercise, maybe do something new. So again, what is driving your thoughts, your feelings on health and wellness during this holiday season? And what do you want driving you? Do you want to be okay with saying, you know what? I don't want to participate in all the, the sugar and fat and whatever. I don't want to, it makes me feel bad. I gain weight. I feel bad about it later. I don't want to, then don't. And on the other side, if you know, you're going to, or you really want to, you know, to a degree, I mean, we're not trying to kill ourselves here, but you know, it, it, be okay with it. How can you get rid of the guilt of not imbibing or imbibing some or fully imbibing and be okay with what you truly want for yourselves? I mean, in regards to the threat of connecting, this is really a time to connect with yourself and what would be the best gift to you and let go of doing things in regards to others' perspectives of you, which for me is, you know, my family's going to, need to get used to me being a little fluffy over the season. I'm coming into the holiday season already a little fluffy because of my big injury uh, that I'm 11 weeks into and not doing much exercise. So uh, the point is being okay with you. All right, next, mind, mental health. Boy, we all know the holiday time can be pretty taxing on our mental states, our mental health. You know, it's interesting that it can be taxing on us, but even if we're not, even if we found some peace in it, you're amongst others who are primarily a little overwhelmed, a little anxious, a little more so than normal. And that vibe affects us as well. So even, you know, it's how do you feel? And then how does the culture feel? And right now people are tend to be, uh, you know, anxiety is at a higher level. So it's going to touch you. I mean, we've come to expect that we're going to be extra busy, extra stressed, extra scattered during the holidays. And this is where I'm supposed to, you know, give counsel on how to be a Zen master, right? And how to say no and have boundaries. And well, that would be great. Taking time to meditate, really questioning if you need to agree and say yes to all the opportunities and requests coming your way. I'm working on those things also, but I also realize it's, it's going to be a busier time. It is for me. And I'm working to accept that and embrace it and find some gratitude with it. There's going to be more activity later nights, more to coordinate. And then New Year's is going to come. Everyone will be in the same boat of, oh my gosh, kind of getting back to normal, back to work, back to school, back to, uh, you know, back to the, the household and taking care of things, whatever's next. It's kind of the law after a storm. And as much as I appreciate the, those who do all your, all their new year planning, you know, before the new year, I'm generally not one of them. 
man, from Thanksgiving to the new year, my plate is full. I'm waiting for that to end. Uh, so I can, I can kind of get, okay, now what do I want to do? I mean, the new year, January one is not some magic date. It's not a, a supernatural time, but it is a relevant time to kind of reevaluate. Re so whether you've been preparing for that and now you're ready to start new things or you're waiting for January 1st, like me to go, okay, blah, blah, get my head on straight. Now, what do I want to, I'm going to come up for air and look at the new year and go, okay, now's when I start to recover, reconsider, reorient. I encourage you to not only guard yourself from others' expectations and cultural expectations as you look at this time, but look at your own expectations. It's, it's amazing how much pressure we sometimes feel from our own expectations that we've adopted or agreed with somewhere along the line that nobody's really forcing us to if we step back. It's just us. And remember that that mental pressure you encounter is just from you, and you can also relieve yourself from it. So again, how is your mental state driving you during the holiday time? What mental state would you like to have? Do you want to be? Nobody sets out to be, but are you kind of agreeing with, I'm going to be the frazzled person like everyone, everybody else? Or are you going to be the, uh, the at peace person? You're going to be the burdened person, the martyr doing everything to take care of, you know, seemingly everyone. Or are you going to be the joyful and grateful person? And it probably won't be one state. This isn't some decision or some switch you can flip and that's who you are. You may fluctuate between those, but we're looking again at an intentionality. What is the, what is the desire? You may have some overwhelm. You may have some deep sighs like that. You need to give yourself some grace and yeah, take some deep breaths, find some things to remember that you're grateful for, find some things you're looking forward to, which may be the, the, that, you know, there's going to be some good things, but you're also looking for it to end and start this new year. Know that you'll find some time, uh, some joy and some relief. It's around the corner. All right, let's look at work and career and business. If you're in the retail business or involved with work that ramps up during the holiday time, then this is a high time for you. And you likely have a bit of a different structure than most around you know, coordinating work and family time. For most of us, work is taking a back seat right now. I find myself doing whatever it takes to kind of keep things afloat and having faith that we'll catch back up when the new year comes. Again, my thread here continues on with just accepting what is to some degree. I mean, if you want to alter it, think you need to fine. Or if you know, ah, it's just going to be that way. Can we find some, can we get the cards on the table and find some peace? You spent the year being diligent. It's a good time for some guilt-free letting go of work pressures. If you can, to some degree. Right now is a season for more family and memories and connecting, or we want it to be. And when January 1 hits, everyone else is going to feel like you. They've been doing that now. Oh my goodness, I got to get back on the saddle with work. And so I find that that's kind of a good time because everybody's doing that and it gives me time to focus. Uh, so I'm going to let go for a few weeks now as much as I can, knowing I'm going to catch up along with everybody else when we need to catch up January 1. I do find it a relevant time to let what mind space I can give to work, be chewing on what I want to be different in the new year. So when January one hits, I may not have done a ton of planning, but I've been chewing. Think about it like planting seeds a little bit uh, and, and I can be you know, chewing on a perspective and changes and let those seeds start to germinate when I do sit down and start to consider things for real. And in this category, uh, I'm prone to ask how your work concerns right now. So as you're amidst the holidays, how your work concerns are influencing your overall feelings and possible anxieties during the holiday time. What can you do to let some of the pressure off? If there's any worry, what's it really about? Are things really as critical as we might end up feeling about them sometimes? Again, it's a time when you might need to just take a deep breath, consider your faith and that things will probably be okay. All right, money, finances. I hope this message finds you with joy and margin regarding your finances. And if so, what a great time to feel gratitude. Not let that slip by. What a great gift. Enjoy it. Give thanks. It may be different from past holidays when you didn't have that margin. Maybe consider helping someone else who's struggling right now and, and, and have fun doing that. If you're not aware of anyone, it might be a time to consider those around you. Oh, gosh, how are they doing? How are they doing financially? Nobody wants to admit that they're struggling, but people invariably are some that you know. 
might be worth some asking, seeing where you can help. Now, on the other side, if you're feeling financial stress, uh, I just talked about work issues and often the things around work are in regards to money and where you're at right now. When you're looking at the end of the year revenue, you may be struggling to devote time to work during the holidays and there are more expenses happening right now. I read recently that the average American household's debt increases by over a thousand dollars during the winter months as they rely on credit to pay for holiday expenses. I actually would have thought that it was more than that. If you're not relying on credit, you may just be tapping into savings though. Either way, money concerns can often be so high during the holiday time. So at a time when your core desire is to have the margin to connect with relationships and find joy and peace and gratitude, our desired drive can easily be derailed by financial concerns. Again, I, I can't easily alleviate this. I wish I could. There's likely no quick fix for you at the point that you're going to hear this show. So we're left to deal with what we can control. And we're back to our mental state, to our faith, to considering the root issue of our feelings. Are we worrying about things that we can't control? Are we exaggerating the gravity of our concerns? So how is your money driving your thoughts, your feelings around money, driving and the realities around money, driving your holiday time or harming your drive, maybe robbing you of some joy? If things happen to really feel dire, you may want to consider if you felt this way before. And today, here you are still. You made it before, probably will again. It can also be a time to get real with financial frustrations and dissatisfactions and look for some resolve and what do you want to change for next year? So with money, your drive around it, what do you want? How do you want to feel? What do you want to be? driving you? How do you want your drive to be fueled? It's a good time to look at your alignment. What's driving you financially and why? What's the feeling, the concern behind it, the emotion? All right, achievements. It's interesting at the end of the year, we generally find ourselves feeling either particularly good or bad about our achievements for the year. Some people are specifically at the end of the year working on goals, goal setting, which highlights what we have or haven't done this year, the goals that we did or did not achieve. And so this is the time of year where people are often a little polarized, feeling like, yeah, I killed it this year, did well, I'm, I'm proud of myself, or the opposite, feeling pretty disappointed with what we didn't achieve this year. If you've done a good bit, you feel good about it. Again, what a great time for gratitude. I'll admit that 2023 was a big year for me. I had a, a lot of epic adventures this year. I got involved with the guys group. We surfed in Mexico. I'd never surfed before. Did stand up paddle boarding in the Colorado, uh, on, on one of the Colorado rivers in a Canyon did mountain, uh, epic mountain biking, uh, trails. Uh, my family skis a good bit in the spring. We did, uh, or I tried snowboarding for the first time. My book, What Drives You, came out this year, published this year. Of course, my adventures ended in September. Biggest wreck and injury of my life when I was down in Taos, uh, New Mexico, the South Boundary tra Trail, real uh, famous mountain bike trail with a group of guys. And I wrecked on my mountain bike at high speed, broke seven bones and uh, got a partially collapsed lung. I don't know if I look at that as an achievement. And that stopped my year of adventures. Uh, but if you had a good year of achievement, man, again, time to be grateful. Interestingly, I've gotten to thinking about the pressures there that we can put on ourselves to do more, right? That's the American way, do more. That's my tendency, at least. And in truth, I'm taking kind of a deep breath and giving myself permission to do less uh, to some, in some aspects like adventures next year. Uh, these epic adventures I did. I don't know if I even care to try to match that. I, I really don't. It was a busy year. It was awesome. It was also a lot. Um, I feel driven to some lower octane activities. Maybe I'll visit a monastery for a while. Try yoga. And honestly, as I think about it, my greatest accomplishment, like the most fulfilling, enduring, is probably the increase in my just personal feelings of peace and self-worth. 
which weren't a result of circumstantial change, but my, just my personal growth. That's really what I'd like to make more, more pro if I want more somewhere, that's it, more progress there. But for you, what do you want to do more in the coming year? And do you want to do more or less or just different? I mean, regardless, it's a great time to consider what your drive is regarding your achievements. I mean, I give a lot of focus to achievements because what we have or haven't done is often how we measure ourselves. And on one hand, I want to draw us to, you know, our self-worth not being about that measurement, not about what we have done, but our self-worth being about who we are. That's direly important. You're not what you've done. You are who you are. That said, it is part of our humanity and wiring to want to grow and progress and create and produce and experience and feel good about things that we have accomplished. It is relevant. So step one here is to evaluate how do you feel about your past year's accomplishments? If there's any feeling of lack, I think really the best thing to do is give yourself some grace. Even if you need some conviction of wanting to do more, I mean, it may feel a little disappointed that you didn't pursue X, Y, Z. You can do that and still have grace. It's not all, it's not you. Your entire year is not about what you didn't do. Feeling guilt and lack or even shame is not going to help you one bit. I know that because I've spent a lot of years allowing those feelings to exist, to dominate sometimes. But here's the big deal. The Holy Grail, as you think toward what achievements you may want in the new year, our annual goals are generally almost exclusively right there about what we want to do, which is fine to a degree. This is where clarity on our drive starts. What do you want? What do you want to do? But what gives alignment and validity and ultimately fulfillment to that is knowing why. Why are you doing it? I mean, if you list down some of the achievements you want, again, like the annual goal list, or, or the things you think you want, then ask yourself, why? Why do you want them? What's at the end of the rainbow, in essence, of those things? I mean, what we're looking to fish out here is why. You want to do X for one reason only, to feel something. It's a mind game, in essense. It's more than the experience itself. It's because you want to feel something. In the moment, sure, but more importantly, long-term. What's it going to leave you with feeling long-term? Some of those things that we go after, we realize it's, there's no long-term benefit or gain. It's not to negate it, but it's to kind of, me, you know, again, measure it out and go, okay, what is this really worth to me? There's something you want to feel yourself attached to every goal, every do that you would list down there. So again, what do you want to achieve or, or why do you want to achieve what you want to achieve? Why? Do you want to achieve whatever you think you want to achieve? And I, I keep putting think in there because as you consider the why, sometimes you'll realize, oh, it's just not much there for me. It's not worth it. I want you to get free to pursue what you really want and let go of what you realize you may not really want. Sounds good. Looks good on paper, but the why behind it doesn't match up. It doesn't align. We spend so much time striving for achievements that we haven't fully audited in regards to why we want them. And then we don't find fulfillment. It's really disappointing. Yeah, you know, I recently went to Las Vegas with my dad and my brother to see U2 concert at the new big $2 billion sphere in Las Vegas. It was tremendous. And afterwards, I was thinking about it, though. I mean, I don't enjoy or appreciate Las Vegas personally in regards to the strip and the lights and sounds and uh, it doesn't, it's not a fit for me. So that wasn't a joy for me. The concert itself, it was amazing. It really was. It was a heck of an experience though. It was a three hour experience. And a lot of the joy was just the anticipation coming up to it. And it was, it was new and neat and exciting and amazing. I even told my kids that's, you know, they're, they're really into music. Cause that'd be a bucket list thing to go see, Somebody you enjoy, you would enjoy seeing in concert and go see them at the sphere. It's, it's, it's an amazing experience. Now, did it change me long-term? Is my life, you know, positively altered because I went to it? Not for the event. What it really ended up with was the value in connecting with my dad and my brother, having a shared experience. That was that was, uh, it was shared context as gold for relationships. 
that that's really where it lands in. It's a human connection was the point of it. So you may not need to fly to Vegas and spend a lot of money to go see a concert at the sphere, but the human connection, you can do that in other ways, but that's what was important. So as I look toward the next year, I want to evaluate what I do against what I really want. What's going to last. What do I expect to get out of it? So what do you want to achieve? What do you want to do in the next year? And more importantly, why? What do you want as that lasting feeling from the experience? This is, again, what, what is and will drive and fulfill you with emphasis on what will fulfill you. That's the goal. Otherwise, it can often be an, uh, a wasted effort. All right, last one here. This is kind of an addition. I don't cover this in the book. Interest, personal interest. You hear me ask about this with every guest that I do a series with on the show, what drives them. And I ask them at the end, what do they do that's just for themselves to inspire them? What things that may be unproductive in and of themselves, uh, but it's something that lights them up. So when you look back on the year, what did you do that just, just for you and inspired you, lights you up? I hope you have work and relationships that inspire you and light you up on a daily basis. But for this exercise, I really want to take that somewhat off the board and think about what you do for a way to look at it as fun and play, which I went through a lot of years. Those weren't a part of my life. They don't tend to be naturally. I tend to be productive and somewhat intense and uh, focused there. And yet I found the people that I was drawn to are ones that engage a lot in, in fun and, and play. And those words have baggage to them. It doesn't mean that it's something frivolous or silly or whatever. Uh, but it's something that opens up a different corridor in your mind. And I realize when I say that, and when I pose this idea, a lot of, a lot of people find themselves with a void. They've gotten so into the grind of productivity and work and family and maintenance of life. They've lost touch with what you would say is just a personal interest, a hobby, a uh, fun play. And for some people, not only have they lost touch with it, they never really had it. They may have grown up in a fairly serious, productive home. And they just always, they were doing school sports. They were doing it for a goal, for an achievement. Now, this is not an attempt to should you into doing something, into figuring out how to have fun and how to find play. I mean, some of my esteemed guests here on the show admit that they do. They enjoy their work and their family, and they don't do a whole lot outside of that. It's interesting now that I think about it, though, most of those will say that it's something that they feel like they want to do. And I think it's because they see the fruit from other people as well. And in a majority of the guests that I do have on the show, though, the influential people of our times that we listen to, uh, they have avid personal interests that they do get, uh, they give a good priority to a big priority to, and then they don't do it. Here's the cutoff or not the cutoff, but the myth in essence, they don't do it because they can afford to. So it's not like they're saying, okay, now I killed myself. I've arrived. Now I can have this personal interest. Most of them, they, they didn't look at it as a luxury in essence. Most of them grew to understand that those interests are vital for them to be at their fullest. And it's helped what get them to this current place of success. And to use that focal point again, achievement. And the greatest enemy I find with these personal interests is guilt. We feel that taking time for us and something that isn't again, intrinsically productive is kind of a luxury and it takes away from serving others. And it turns the, I, I, I want to turn the table and think about those you care about. There was a personal interest that lit them up. Would you want them to do it? I think of course you would. If it's your spouse, your kids, your friends, and there was something that just, oh, really gave them joy. Would you want them to do it? Yes. Why? Because you're selfish, just like me. But we want people happy and joyful and inspired because it makes our lives better. I want people lit up because it lights me up. Well, how would that not relate to you? They want you lit up. And you may find yourself in a relationship where you would serve each other to talk about this because you may get pushback. You may hear this and go, oh my gosh, yeah, X lights me up. Going dancing lights me up. And you know that your spouse, significant other, whatever may look at that and go, well, pff, good for you to go off and have fun while I'm taking care of whatever. So it may be a time to look to, to, for you to share that, to go, look, we want to be lit up for each other. What lights you up, hon? 
and talk about that and then turn the table on you and say, gosh, this lights me up. Can we honor those things? Just like you would, you would never look at somebody taking their vitamins and go, well, good for you that you could take vitamins. I'm just going to eat gruel. No, you would hope, I hope that you would support them uh, taking their vitamins, you know? Uh, so you've got to change the perspective on the value of these personal uh, interests. I mean, the reason I had, I want to pull this out too. Um, well, no, let me, let me hit one more thing on this aspect of, of fun and play and whatnot. Again, we're taken out. This is not a luxury. It's something you need to do. You may even need to look at it, play. I like playing mind games and look at it and say, what if, what if somebody forced you or they incentivized you? Hey, I'll give you a million bucks at the end of the year. If you participate in something that lights you up, have a personal interest, a hobby, whatever, and get it out of the luxury perspective. So if you need to play a mind game like that, do that. And if, if you find yourself now stumped also going, okay, I hear you, but I just don't know. I, I, you are in good company for one, please don't vilify yourself for that. Uh, you're in good company. You may need to try some things though. You may have never really engaged in stuff that, that gave you joy. And you may need to try some things, expose yourself to some new activities. That's what got me into some, that's why I surfed this year. I don't, I don't, I just wasn't even on my radar. I'm not a big water guy and never surfed. I wouldn't have done that. But then these guys are going to do it as a group activity. And they did it focused with discussions focused around legacy. And they also included an epic mountain bike ride in the jungle. You know, so that was up my alley. But that's what got me doing it. So it may, it may need you to, to think a little bit uh, outside of your general box to figure out what it is you would enjoy. Would you enjoy painting, uh, dancing? Uh, gardening, rock climbing. I, I don't know what, what the adventure is or what the activity is. Uh, speaking of my group of guys though, man, there's nothing stronger than finding people. There's hardly anything that you could find interest in these days that you can't find a group of people to enjoy it with, to participate in it with. And if not, maybe talk to your friends and family and find somebody who'll do something with you. Hey, let's try rock climbing or, you know, whatever it may be. And again, I'm going to come back to that. If you're in a committed relationship, one of the most powerful things you can do here is to discuss this concept, listen to this segment together if you want, uh, and figure out how can you support the value of it with each other and for each other. The point here is that personal interest can be such a huge fuel center for your overall drive. And I hope, again, you're living an inspired life overall, but there are some people and you find yourself amidst hard circumstances, maybe work that's pretty challenging or relationships that are pretty challenging, man, I found people who it's a life giving endeavor to dig into that personal interest that just, again, lights you up. And, and I will commit to you, this is, we're talking more than just entertainment, not the dis entertainment, man. I'm all for a show or a game or whatever it is. But this is, we're talking about a fulfillment that comes from engaging actively, participating in an activity, not spectating. Okay. Uh, again, you know, I went and spectated you too. The joy was in who I went with and having this experience together. So we're talking about not virtual, but actual experiences. All right, friends, I trust this personal audit on what is driving you during the holiday season and coming new year sparked some valuable ideas and helped you clarify your drive or clarify some of your questions around your drive, maybe some of your confusions around your drive. Of course, you want to go deeper, a little more robust dive into what's driving you in all these key areas of your life for the holidays and the new year and beyond in general. Go check out my book, What Drives You. You can find it on Amazon in any form you desire. Otherwise, friends, I just wish you a very Merry Christmas, a happy holidays, a massively joyous new year. And thank you, I'm honored that you're tuning in to the What Drives You podcast. Till next time, stay driven. Yeah.